The swab of dread has been rammed up noses 34 million times in Australia since the pandemic began. These PCR tests are costly and can take up to three days to yield results at pathology labs. But there is another way. It's called rapid antigen testing. And that's been the saviour. Uh, without that, we wouldn't be able to do anything that, 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 we've, that we're doing now. At Opera Australia, work is underway for next year's production of Lab OM. Hello. None of it can be done over Zoom, so a specialised rapid antigen testing station was set up in the headquarters last year, one of the first in Australia. You see in the other room here, people come in first thing in the morning, they have a test, they get a result in 15 minutes, and then they can go into the workplace, provided they've had a negative result. Dr Henning Lillivist is a former New South Wales public health official, and he helped establish Opera Australia's testing regime. We do regular testing of people that engage in singing or playing wind instruments. We are assured to identify anyone who has picked up the virus at the very earliest stage. So far, rapid antigen testing is hardly used in Australian businesses. As well as Opera Australia, Combank has begun using it in some branches and healthcare settings have also utilised it. We're not actually adding any risk, we're simply just adding to the ability to detect cases, detect people who have the virus. Other than being a less invasive test, there are also several benefits, including cost. I think each one of these, uh, the cost is somewhere between five, 10 or $15. And large events taking place overseas are starting to ask for take home test results to mitigate the risk of large gatherings. In Chicago, um, they've been using them for um, live uh, entertainment events, large events, uh, regardless of whether you're vaccinated or not. In Canada, the United Kingdom and Singapore, governments are already handing out rapid antigen tests. But in Australia, rapid antigen testing hasn't been widely available until now because of concerns about accuracy and people testing themselves. Although not perfect, PCR is considered more accurate than rapid antigen tests. But 28 different antigen tests have now been approved by the TGA. And Dr Lillivist believes the less invasive tests can complement PCRs as the nation starts to live with COVID. Vaccinated people are more likely than unvaccinated people to have asymptomatic or very low symptomatic uh, disease from, from having this virus, and they can still transmit it. So it's important to still test people that have been vaccinated and, and to engage in surveillance testing. Regulations make the tests too expensive for many businesses. Currently, a health practitioner needs to supervise tests so that contact tracers can be alerted to positive cases. Some health experts believe that can be resolved. If you really didn't trust the community, you can link um, take-home tests with an app so that the um, result does come up on the app and um, gets uh, sent to uh, the authorities if it's positive so that they can contact trace. But remember, they're going to find it hard to do contact tracing with high circulating virus anyway. Health Minister Greg Hunt says regulations could soon change. Rapid antigen tests will be available in workplaces and soon enough in the home environment. For some businesses, that can't come soon enough. It's uh, going to be of uh, huge value uh, as we move forward. Uh, we, we can't keep going relying solely on the more detailed PCR testing. Thank you for choosing the Illum COVID-19 home test. Supply of testing kits has been an issue in the past. One of the TGA-approved testing kits is made in Queensland and manufacturers Illum are already exporting to the United States. The Chamber of Commerce says we should start stockpiling the tests now. We can't afford to be slow off the mark uh, as uh, perhaps we were with uh, uh, purchasing uh, vaccines. It could be the next step in what will soon be Australia's new reality. I think we can become so worried 
about the situation we're in, so preoccupied with what this virus is, what it's going to do and what it means, is that it's easy to forget that there will be a future, there will be life after COVID, and we need to make sure that our cultural life is in good shape after COVID. Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 7.30's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.